Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Delphus Jefferson High School, where tonight WSM brings you a matchup of two teams that are undefeated in Northwest Conference play. They are also, both also 20 and 1 on the season. This game is a makeup game. We have Delphus Jefferson. They host the Lipsic Vikings for the NWC Girls Championship this year. My name is Mark Shines. My pleasure to do play by play alongside Nate Garlock. Nate, this is kind of a really cool thing about how the schedule got butchered up a little bit. Now we got this going on. Yeah, usually coaches don't like cancellations, but yeah. that cancellation turned into one of the marquee games that we will see. It, it, I mean, around here in previous years and in years going forward, you have two teams, 20-1 and one overall, undefeated in the conference. These are the types of games you see in the final four down when we get down to Dayton. This is not a regular right. season matchup. Regular season's over. You get a bonus game. What a way to roll into tournament play. And no matter what happens here tonight, we are crowning an NWC champion. Let's look, talk about the Lipstick Vikings a little bit. And Coach Gary Kreinbeck's team, they average almost 49 points a game. They hang their hat on playing defense. Not a particularly tall team, but a team is having, obviously, a very good year. And what, what are they going to bring to the table tonight? Well, I mean, first and foremost, they have got to find some way to control Olivia Lindemann. Liv Lindemann, the 1,000-point scorer, is having a fantastic year. They know that. Everybody knows that. And that is going to be a key to that defense. They she is dangerous when she can get to the basket. When she's able to penetrate, she can get to the rim. That's when she can do a lot of her a lot of her damage. And Lipsick knows that. They want to try to stop that from happening tonight. They want to battle on the inside. You know, and at the end of the day, this is a big road game for them. They have to come into a gym. This gym is jam-packed. Uh, somebody told me it holds 500. There yeah. are more than 500 people <laughs> in this gym tonight. Yeah. It, it is a, going to be a raucous crowd, and they have got to be able to control those emotions at a big road game. Gary Kreinbrick, the Lipsick coach, won his 500th game of his career a little earlier this season. Here's his starting lineup. They will go with number two, uh, Kirsten Martinez. She's a 5'5 five, five senior, averaging nine points a game. Number five is Ava Henry, 5'7 junior, 5.6 points per game, three and a half assists. Number 11, Marissa Hermiller, 5'10 senior, 7.4 points per game and seven rebounds. 14 is Whitney Langles, 5'5 five, five senior, 15 points a game, nearly four assists. The fifth starter is number 21, Abby Hazelman, a 5'9 senior. She averages 4.4 points and 4.7 rebounds. Well, Delphus Jefferson, they are second to Crestview as far as number of uh, NWC championships for ladies. Obviously, Coach Lindemann would like to get a win here this evening. How about things for them this evening we can look for? You know, this is what one of the things that makes this matchup so unique. You know, we talked about Liv Lindemann and how Lipsick is going to have to control her. On the other side, though, Whitney Langles is going to do that for Lipsick. Delphus has got to find some way to match up with her to keep her in check tonight. You know, they're also going to want to control the tempo. They don't want to get out of what they do. They do a nice job moving up and down the floor. They can run into that half court when they need to. They play very good, solid man-to-man -man defense. they got to continue that tonight. Keep Langles and a couple other players in front of them. Not letting them get around into the lane to finish strong. And they know that they've got to win that, that rebounding. They've got to get there tonight. They're going to have the size advantage. they got to do that tonight. Limit lips, Lipstick to one and done. Let's talk about their starting lineup. They will go with number five, Hannah Wiltsey. She's a 5'8 senior, averaging 9.2 points per game. Number 10, Gwen Tiemann, 5'7 senior, 3.1 points per game. 15 is Liv Lindemann. She's a 5'9 junior, 20.2 points per game. Six boards, four assists for her on the season. Number 30 is Jessica Rostover. She's a 5'5 senior at 3.8. And number 42 in the middle, Lauren French, 6'3 junior, averaging 8.3 points per game and nine boards for her in, on this particular season. It's Delphus Jefferson, it's Lipsick. It's for the NWC Championship in Girls Basketball in 2023. It's coming up next, you're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. We're back at Delphus Jefferson High School. Tonight our scoreboard is presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Home style happens here. Mark Shine and Nate Garlock. We're going through our final starting lineups this evening. Lipsick has already been introduced this evening. The Delphus Jefferson Lady Cats are being introduced as we speak. We want to talk about our officials this evening. The same three that were assigned to this game back a couple weeks ago when it was snowed out. Dan Carnahan, Greg Rufinock, and Dick Anderson. 
JV game tonight was won by Dolphus Jefferson. What a great environment for young girls to play in, preparing for them for their varsity career. Yeah, this crowd is something else. You know, it's a unique gym. You know, you don't get to high schools very often. You have everybody on one side, you know, and this it, we're all here tonight, yeah. and, it, and it feels like you're on top of the floor. And it is going to be a jam-packed crowd raucous tonight as we get underway. You know, it was a little bummed when this one got canceled earlier this season. Yeah. was really glad that they made this one up. And then we have the stakes that we do tonight. Lipsick in the black jerseys with gold and purple numbers this evening. A little bit difficult to see. Uh, Jefferson in white. There's a three that does not go early on for Ava Henry. And that one also does not go. That was by Hannah Wiltsy, my mistake. And we'll head the other way. This is Ava Henry with the basketball. Into the corner we find A.B. Hazel Hazelman. I think it's going to be key that here in the early going, which team is going to control the emotions. You know, this is a lot of buildup. Everybody's talking about this one, getting ready for it. Everybody knows what's on the line. You know, and the team that can kind of control those emotions and just get into it, get into their offense, and play how they want to play is going to have a big advantage. Whitney Langles takes her shot up inside. She's contested by Gwen Tiemann. The ball will go out of bounds to Lipsick. And uh, the inbounder will be... Uh, Marissa Hermiller. Bounce pass is tipped out of bounds by French as they tried to get it inbound to Martinez. Lipsick's got a tall, a tall order all night long trying to handle Lauren French on the inside. They're going to have to find some way to combat that. Deep three will not go. Scramble for the ball, and we're going to get a held ball situation, and it will stay at this end of the floor. You can see already that intensity, fighting for those loose balls, getting after, getting that tie up. Early jump ball favors Lipsick. Man-to-man -man situation, and finally lobs it inbounds. Working down inside, this is Langles. Whitney Langles has the first basket of the game, a 15-point-a-game score. It's just a great job by Whitney that time, working her way through. She actually had a double team come late. It's able to still go through it. Go cheap for three was a go. Ava Henry with the basketball. Ball's tip stolen away inside by Wiltsey. Will go the other way to the three-point line. Goes Teeman, but she has to bring it back out. This is Lindemann getting a screen from French. Two and a half minutes, minute and a half into this one. Jefferson not on the board yet. Here's Tiemann back out front, head in the rim, and scoop shot will go. French with the rebound, and Lauren French has the first Jefferson Lady Cat basket. And right out the gate there on that possession, you saw what Lauren French is going to do and the advantage Delphus Jefferson will have tonight as French didn't really even have to leave the floor to be able to outreach that basketball and able to get it back in for two. This is Langles. And then they reset to Henry. Herb Miller comes off a screen. Right on the three-point line, but for two is Hazelman. A little bit of a rotation miscue that time as Lindemann didn't realize that that basketball pretty much was coming right to her and moved out. Hazelman left all alone, able to get it in. Lindemann weaves her way through traffic. This will be a two that doesn't go. Good checkout job inside by Hazelman. Keep French away from the offensive rebound. Will go the other way. Henry. And we're going to get an offensive foul. The first foul of the basketball game will go to Whitney Langles. And she gets caught lowering her shoulder and shoving off. You can see Whitney turn around, throw her arms up, but that was a pretty obvious call. Yeah. A lot of extension, is able to get her defender on the ground that time. So I, I think that kind of represents the emotion that's going on right now. Everybody's kind of all tied up, you know, trying to get something accomplished. It was a pretty easy foul call to make, and yet the, here's a 2-3 zone. Lindemann. This is French. Lindemann comes off a screen. This will be a three that will go up. By Rostover, nope, and the long rebound will go to French. Jefferson lucky that time as that basketball kind of bounced around in no man's land for a while and nobody really went for it. Luckily, Lauren French had been trying to get back down the floor, able to gather it in for another opportunity. Going to get another three ball. Rostover, nope, French battles inside. The rebound will end up in the hands of 
Hannah will see, and she'll get to go to the free throw line. Sometimes it's just all about putting yourself in the right position, and that's what Hannah Wiltsey did right there. And she found herself under the basket. Basketball just kind of landed into her hands. Kirsten Martinez picks up her first foul, team's second. Here's Wiltsey. And that one bounces out on her. For sub in the basketball game will be a Jefferson sub. That's number 22, right on Marquise. Hannah Wiltsey, a 52% free throw shooter. And that time empty on both of them. Teeman got the long rebound on the free throw, and here's Lindemann. High ball screen from French. So far, Lipstick. Oh, it's stolen. Solid defensive play to the rim, and finishing at the rim is Henry. What a great job by Ava, Hen Ava Henry. She just took that one away from Lindemann. Not something they're used to seeing, but as Lindemann looked like she was trying to tee up something, maybe trying to drive, Ava Henry said she's not going to wait around, able to get it all the way back in for that easy layup. 6-2 early on, Vikings. Teeman looking for a teammate. Here's Lindemann. She's going to head to the rim. 12-footer for her. Bounces out. Rebound is secured by Hazelman. Will go the other way. Vikings in a hurry. Here's a three out of the corner. Hazelman with a rebound. Put back. No, but she's going to get to go to the foul line. Delphus Jefferson fortunate at that time as that basketball looked like it was going to drop for Hazelman. And it's a good job. She knew that contact was coming, still able to get it up and in, or up and at least almost in. Lauren French gets the uh, first foul to a Jefferson player tonight. That free throw goes. Three points in the game for Abby Hazelman. Here comes number 20 in the game. This would be Kirsten Moore, 5'7", junior. So far, Lipstick's been able to do what they wanted, and that was limit the penetration of Liv Lindemann. And she's right now having a hard time getting any kind of space. See her now, she, with a little bit of head of steam here, can try to get to the basket. Here's Lindemann going to the glass and gets it knocked out of bounds. I thought they were going off her. It did not. Good block inside that time by Marissa Hermiller. First Viking sub will enter. That's number three, Leah Kirkendall. She's a 5'9 junior. Plays a lot of time. She gets starter minutes. Here's Lindemann, works inside. Shot's not there. That ball's tipped loose. Stolen away by Langles. We'll head the other way. This will be a three for Martinez. Kirsten Martinez knocks down the first three-point field goal of the game. And early on, it's a 10-2 lead Vikings. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Season 18 of the Sports Report continues on Friday nights. Join Patrick Kamler for a full hour of the most comprehensive basketball coverage around all season long. That includes the tournament Fridays at 10 p.m. on WTLW. Vikings have exploded here in the last couple minutes, Nate. Yeah, Coach Lindemann wanted to take a quick 30-second timeout, just trying to regroup her team. As Jefferson was looking a little shell-shocked there. You saw a little bit of a lazy pass that last possession. Langles was able to get her hands on that one. Right, not, not a lot of movement on offense, but good feet on the inside. The French. She gets her own rebound, or did she? Nope, tracked down the corner by Martinez. Here go the Vikings the other way. Langles with the ball. Defensive pressure out front. This is Ava Henry. Langles looked inside. She comes off a screen. Bounce pass across the lane, and French knocks it out of bounds. Lauren French just got to that basketball. As Langles does such a good job of getting the defense to start moving and rotating, she's quick, got, has good ball handling skills. And right now, Jefferson just doesn't have much of an answer. Ball gets lobbed out to Hermiller. This will be Kirkendall, and she's going to give it up. Headed baseline, pass is going to go to the corner. A ball fake and head to the rim, and a good finish inside by Marissa Hermiller. Lipstick right now is just taking advantage 
of, you know, a little bit of sloppy play from Jefferson, you know, slow closeouts, you know, not committing. That time, it just took a little bit of a head fake, and then she went right around to the fender, went uncontested all the way to the basket. They come out to double Lindemann, make her give up the basketball, then try to keep her from getting it back. Trying to work inside with Wiltsy. She gets doubled up, and the ball gets tossed out on top. This will be a three ball that'll go up from Tima, and that misses. Tracked down in the corner by Wiltsy, however. Here's Lindemann. Ava Henry has drawn that defensive assignment, plus a lot of double team help from her teammates. Lindemann accepts a screen. More. Runner off glass will go. Gwen Tiemann has a basket. You know, Gwen Tiemann not a, a, traditionally a three-point shooter for this team, only shooting 19%, six three-pointers. Here in this first quarter, she's already put up three, hadn't connected on all of them. Good decision that time to put it on the floor and get to the basket. This is Martinez. Henry, and they swing it around. Look inside. Martinez gets a three look. French goes and snaps the rebound out of the air. Here comes Lindemann the other way. See if they get something in transition. She goes right to the rim. Her scoop shot's blocked. What a heads-up play that time by Marissa Hermiller knocking it out of bounds off of Lindemann. Lindemann went right in. It was one on five that time. And when she didn't make it, was going to let it just bounce out of bounds. But Hermiller, like you said, just a great heads-up play to make sure she knocked that one off of Lindemann. You know, what I've noticed the last couple of times, Lipsick. This is going to be a physical game. Lipstick, as um, Lindemann has gone for the drive, there's been contact, there's been a little bit of pushing, a little bit of shoving, as they want to make sure that she's not comfortable getting free runs. And right now, the officials are letting them play, and Lindemann's going to have to adjust. And there's a steal and and one opportunity for Lynn Lindemann. Lindemann decided she was tired yep. of going against five, so decided to steal it up top and took that one-on-one -on -one all the way in. Man, tough layup, but Liv Lindemann going to the free throw line. Ava Henry becomes the third Lipsick Viking to have a single foul. Christopher will enter, and French will get a long break perhaps as we head to the quarter. Lindemann shoots 75% from the free throw line. Makes that one. She has three in the game, a 20-point game scorer on the season. Marquis is back in the basketball game. Good flurry here for the homestanding Jefferson Wildcats. Cut the lead to five. Looks like Lipsick wants to play last shot of the quarter. But getting a good move down inside, unable to finish inside, however. And in a scramble for the ball. Saved it in the corner. Nice play, Lindemann. And what? She stepped on the sideline. It looks like she yep. must have. Must have. Full gym, we can't quite see that yeah. near sideline, but not even, I have no idea how Lindemann even saved that one to begin with. Just a great effort play, but in the end, Lipsick gets it back. Here's Henry, she's gonna get a screen. Pass into the corner. Here's a shot that's gonna go up at the buzzer, nope. First eight minutes in the books, Lipsick 12, Jefferson five. You're watching High School Basketball, WOSN. We're back at Jefferson. Our scoreboard is presented tonight by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. Mark Shine, Nick Garlock. Any numbers jump off your page at you? Well, to me right now, it's the, it's, um, right now there's not one person getting it done. Five uh. different scores for Lipsick, three different scores from Delphus Jefferson. Nobody on either team has made one, more than one basket. So they're spreading it around. Everybody is getting involved. You know, and Liv Lindemann finally came alive a little bit there in that last quarter to get her team back within striking distance here down five. Lipsick with a five point lead as we head into quarter number two. Lauren French on top. Lindemann trying to get open off a French screen, but she's being hounded this time by Martinez. This ball goes down to the corner to roast of her. Going to reset, get a double screen down, and what do we have? Offensive foul, illegal screen. That one will be Lauren French's second foul. 
Everything had kind of slowed down there for a minute as Delphus Jefferson was trying to be a little bit more methodical running their offense. And in the end, ends up having uh, Lauren French pick up her second. She's going to go to the bench. When Tiemann replaced Lauren French, at the same time, Ava Henry checked back into the game, and she has the basketball. A little weave action out front. Jessa Rossifer, she's guarding Whitney, doing a nice job of mirroring her, making sure she doesn't run free. They were trying to find her on the inside. Kirkendall's shot won't go. We'll head the other way with Lindemann. She's going to throw it ahead. Here's a left-handed three ball by Hannah Wilsey. Nope. Rebound on the backside, though, comes to Tiemann. Here's another three. That one will go for Mar Ryland Marquise. Marquis comes up with a big three-pointer that time for her team as Delphus Jefferson had been ice cold from behind the arc. First made three-pointer of the game, makes it a two-point game. Marquis has made now a 32 of those on the season. Lipsick at one point had a 12-2 lead. See if they can get it going again or if Jefferson continues the run. And it tried to pass it inside. He heads up play by Kirkendall to get to it. And they have to bring it back out front to Hermiller. In the early going, it looked like Lipsick was just a step faster than Delphus Jefferson. Here's a deep three. That hits the front of the rim and will check up out of bounds. And you almost wonder yep. if Lipsick blew a lot of energy there in that first quarter because they just looked a step, uh, step faster. But here in this second, it's definitely closed in, and Jefferson's right there. Yeah, it was 6.01 to go here in quarter number two. And having been scoreless for a while, Coach Gary Kreinberg takes a timeout. There is no admission fee to watch this game, but there is a cost for TV44 to broadcast it for you. Say thanks to viewer-supported TV44 by sending them a financial gift right now. TV44 relies on the donations of viewers to enable the airing of this game and all other locally produced programs. Donate now by visiting WTLW.com and click the Donate button. Been on 12 for a long time, haven't they? Yeah, they have. You know, they, they found something there in the early going, especially getting to the inside and getting some open. Their rotation was really good, and they had the Jefferson defense almost guessing there at times. But after that timeout in the first quarter that Coach Lindemann took, Delphus Jefferson has looked a lot different uh, and more in tune with this game. It was 10-2 when that timeout took place at 3.25 to go. The next basket went to Lipsick, but since that time, it has been Jefferson. That's a three. Hermiller rebounds on the backside, gets pressured right away. It's a pretty good look. I think Marquis that time would have just liked to take a little bit longer. Didn't quite have her feet set as she tried to sidestep it. Jefferson defense has been... Uh, very good in the last several possessions. Here's a move to the goal. A scoop shot will not fall inside for Langles. Lindemann's going to throw it ahead. They have Marquis. She heads to the glass, and her off glass shot won't go. It's rebounded inside, however. This one was going to go up from Wiltsey, and Hannah Wiltsey. Hannah Wiltsey's been trying to find it. Struggled in that first quarter. But just like that, Delpha Jefferson has this lead again. There's Henry, skates down the lane. She gets stripped from behind, and we're going to get a foul. That is the 36th three-point field goal in the season for Hannah Wiltsey. <laughs> Lindemann picks up the foul. That's her team's third. I think somewhat interesting through all this, Nate. They've done a lot of this with Lauren French on the bench. Yeah, she had to go out with those two fouls a, a few minutes ago. And Muscle up inside, finally gets a... Breaks that long drought. That would be Marissa Hermiller and puts her team back on top by one. And just like that, that's where they were going to miss Lauren French on the inside. Nice job by Hermiller taking advantage of the size advantage. Not something that Lipsick typically has. Lindemann on the drive. First time she's kind of had a clean look at it but couldn't finish. That is true. Rebound comes to Hazelman. We'll head the other way. Now Ava Henry. This is Hermiller. Working inside is Henry. Bounce pass. Martinez now works down inside. She goes off glass, gets her own rebound. And we're going to get a foul. This will be team foul number four. And it will be the first one on Ryla Marquis. It was good defense down low by Wiltsy. I think actually Wiltsy got a hand 
on that basketball to redirect it before that tie up, but good hustle by Lipsick to get it back. And foul starting to add up just a little bit. Long three by Henry. And I think that's right there is a good example. Lipsick looks like they're getting tired. You see a lot of huffing and puffing. That time Ava Henry just kind of chucked that one up, wasn't really set. Here's hey, little, that's that fatigue setting yeah. in. Yeah. Here's French back again. Sometimes you got all the adrenaline flying early, and when that disappears, then that's when that fatigue sets in. See if they can regroup here with half of the second quarter to go. French back in the game. Inside. They go right to her. She misses, gets her own rebound, and hit out of bounds by Lipsick. Coach Kreinbrick didn't think so. He's asking the officials for some help. I don't think he's going to win that one. Tessa Rostefer is back in the game, and she will be the inbounder. Yeah, they wasted no time trying to get French going on the inside. Rostefer Lindemann. This ball's going to go up and bounces around. Yet another rebound. Hannah Wilsey, good possession this time. Jefferson. Wilsey ball fakes. It gets inside, and she gets a foul. See that contact came from. Looks like it will go to Marissa Hermiller. Four different Vikings now have a single foul. Four team fouls for them, also four for Jefferson. Whistle, whistle helped Wiltsy that time. I think it might have bailed her out. It looked like she was starting to lose the handle on that one before the foul came. Deep three, Lindemann short. And rebounds tracked down by Marissa Hermiller. Will go the other way. Skip pass, headed to the rim is Henry, and she loses it. Good pressure from Wiltsy. Lindemann's headed the other way, right to the rim, contact. And she'll get to go to the free throw line. Looks like Martino was a little late getting there to set up for the charge. Liv Lindemann knew that contact was coming, didn't shy away from it, and just was a little bit faster to get to the basket. Kirsten Martinez picks up her second foul at the scorer's table as Kirsten Moore for Jefferson. Here's Lindemann, who's made a free throw earlier for three-point play, but that one bounces out on her. Thousand point score into the game comes Kirsten Moore. Five seven junior. Liv Lindemann takes a deep breath. Here's free throw number two. That one she makes. Nodding this one up at 14. This one's living up to everything it was yeah. built to be. Took a minute to get Delphus Jefferson going, but both teams have comes on a run and now. About three minutes left to go here in the half, all tied at 14. The effort from both teams, particularly the defensive end, has been outstanding. Here's a pass inside Martinez. She throws a nice pass. Good assist by uh, Martinez for Hazelman to get a score for five points for her. She's the leading scorer right now for the Lipstick Vikings. That yeah, was a great slip and able to find just a little bit of space down right low. Back at you. Good pass inside, but French has to give it back up. That pass came from Lindemann. She's going to get a high ball screen from French. Here's a deep three that'll go up. That shot was missed, and the rebound came to Martinez. She's going to throw it ahead to Langles. Langles bounce pass into the corner. Tried to get it inside that time on the pass to her Miller and could not. Mark that Wistek. brings uh, Wiltsey and Tiemann back into the game. Marquis that time a little bit lucky. as She'd gotten out of position. She's going to try to jump that pass, but did it a little bit early. Fortunate to get their hand on that one because she didn't. Hermiller was going to have a wide open look at two. There's a pass inside. Power layup and well defended inside. And then an over the back and contact foul by Marissa Hermiller. She now has two fouls. Great box out by Gwen Tiemann that time to move Hermiller off of her spot. Hermiller, not much of a choice that time. She went up trying to get that rebound. I think she was still a little frustrated too coming off of She thought she had some contact on that first shot. With that second foul, Leah Kirkendall enters the basketball game. Two point Viking lead, we're at two minutes to go in the opening half. Here's Lindemann, pull up his pass, but French couldn't secure the pass and we'll head the other way. Lee Langhall's pushing the ball down the floor. Good defense. Picked her up that time. From 17 feet, Kirkendall missed that one. Lindemann in a hurry the other way. And pulled up, missed. Hustle for the rebound. French secures it. Ball fake, moved to the goal by Wiltsy scores. She's got five in the game. Number great five, move 16. by yeah, great move by Wiltsy. 
And he got the entire Lipsick team thought she was going to put that three-pointer up, so nobody was ready when she put that one on the floor. 80 seconds to go here in the opening half. Henry throws it down to the corner to Hasselman. Jefferson's Langles. played great, yeah. great defense Boy, on Langles all night long. Kirkendall gets another look and gets her own rebound. That's back by French. Gutsy play by her. That could have been foul number three if contact had been called. And who hit it out of bounds? Yeah, Lauren French has got to be careful. Yeah. Coach Lindemann does not want her to get that third foul. Yeah, look here. Wouldn't be shocked at all yeah. if she's coming in for French. And she is. I think even Lauren was, thought she was staying in. But <laughs> Lauren said, I don't want to come out. I'm going to hide and pretend <laughs> no. I don't see the sub coming in. Coach Lindemann did not want to risk that one, yeah. though. Henry with the basketball, tied at 16. Ava Henry went to the rim and she will draw a foul. That will be the 15th foul. Hannah Wiltsy gets her first. Henry to inbound, 49 seconds to go here. And tipped out of bounds, who hit it? Ball was knocked out of bounds by Marquis. Langles, trigger. She gets a three look. That one bounces around, and who hit that one out of bounds? It will go to, what's the call? It's going to stay with Lipsick. It's a great sale up top by Hazelman to get the ball into Langles' hands, just a little bit short, but Lipsick fortunate to keep it. There's a pass out front. Martinez playing with a couple of fouls. She's going to give it up to Henry. See if they play last shot now with half a minute to go. And nope, missed that. Missed opportunity with a pass in the corner. Couldn't get be secured by Leah Kirkendall. Pass a little low for her. Offensive possession. Here comes French back in the game. Now see if Jefferson can get the last shot. They're going to sub in as well. This will bring Marissa Hermiller in for Lipsick. It'll be interesting to yeah. see what Delphi Jefferson does here because, you know, this offense has looked better when they've moved quickly and they haven't held. On those long offensive sets, we've seen bad shots, long three-pointers. The offense gets a little stagnant, some turnovers. They've looked a lot better when they just let Liv Lindemann get into the flow of things, move that defense around, and that's created open shots for her teammates. Trying to keep it from getting it back. Rostrofer gave it up. This is Wilty with the basketball, and they finally get it to Lindemann. Long three, Liv Lindemann. Liv Lindemann has that kind of range, and you cannot give her that much space. She steps into a huge three-pointer. She took that. She was closer to us than she was to the basket. We're at the top of the arena. <laughs> that puts Jefferson up 19-60 into break. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Back at Jefferson, it's halftime. Our scoreboard tonight is presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. <laughs> Thanks to a three ball from Liv Lindemann right at the end of the half. It is 19-16 for Jefferson. Propel him into the second half, you think, mate? Maybe. Yeah, I mean, you would you would hope so. I mean, the defense from Delphus Jefferson has really been the difference, especially starting in that second quarter. They held Lipsick to just four points after being down early. They've made some good adjustments. And, you know, Liv Lindemann, that big three-pointer, you just never know. She, you know. she had that kind of space and, uh, you know, a little bit of a defensive miscue for Lipsick that time. You know Liv Lindemann can score. You know she can shoot. You do not want to give her that much space. She has range. She made him pay for it. So we'll see what happens here. Um, you know, both defenses have been good. Quarter scores, Delphus Jefferson, seven in the first, 12 in the second for Lipsick, 12 in the first, four in the second. So outside of that three-pointer at the very end, it had been very, very even. Five points for Abby, Abby Hazelman to lead Lipsick. Their ball first. Yeah, I think for Lipsick, they're going to have to find some way to get Whitney Langles going. She's been very quiet, only two points on the night, the leading scorer for this team. And 
Jefferson has just done a great job of face guarding her, running extra help when they've needed it, and she's going to try to get right into the inside, but couldn't again because there came the help on the backside. This is Hazelman. She's going to try to get to the rim and cannot, and finally they kick it back out. This will be her Miller. Lengthy possession, and the ball is thrown inside. French has a couple of fouls trying to guard Hazelman, and she blocked that shot cleanly. We'll go the other way with Lindemann. Great job by French that time to get her hands on that one without picking up the foul. Long three ball by Wiltsy won't go. We'll head the other way. Numbers and to the rim. Nope, she has to kick it back out. Short jumper. That one will go for Whitney Langle. She's got four now. That's the score you were hoping to get going for Vikings. Yeah, absolutely. An elite score is Langle. She's had a tremendous year as we were just talking about. they got to find ways of getting the basketball in her hand and get some openings. And She doesn't need a lot of space, but that time wide open, able to finish. Lindemann that time went right the, uh, to the opposite side. That ball's going to be lost out of bounds under pressure from Gwen Tiemann. She did not accept the two ball screens, went to her left, and good defense collapsed to her. Yeah, Herm Miller did a great job coming from behind and knocked that one away. Just unfortunately couldn't hold on to it as it went out of bounds. Ball will be inbounded by Rustifer, and she throws it out front to Lindemann. So been a, I have been a little su surprised that they haven't done more high ball screens for Lindemann, a little bit of pick and roll with French. Roastifer from 17 feet, her first basket. But why do you need to do that when yeah. you can just throw the long passes to the open players on the other side? Nice job by Jessica Roastifer to finish that one. You can see everybody kind of staring at Lindemann. She just threw it on the flare screen, just threw it over there, made a basket, three-point lead again. Langles with the basketball this time. Tries to get to the baseline, and we're going to get a pushing foul that will go against Hannah Wilson. That'll be Hannah's second foul of the game. Hannah just kind of sat down that time as Langles was trying to go baseline, and a little bit of the extension in front of the official made it an easy whistle. And in front of Cameron Stanton, a camera person on the floor tonight. This three ball is going to go up by Henry. She made it. Ava Henry has five points in the game with her 19th three-point field goal of the season, and we're tied at 21. Lindemann, looks like she wanted to load up that time and could not. This is Lindemann. Again, they get to her with Henry. Here's a three that'll go up. That one bounces out. Rebound comes to Langles, and we'll go the other way. She's in a hurry. And ball fake and go, but she couldn't finish it. Inside was her Miller. It was Foster looking for somebody, and I think her coach is going to get a timeout. Coach Lindemann yep. running down the court, <laughs> trying to give the attention to the officials. Did not want to lose that possession. 5.20 to go in the third. You're watching High School Basketball WOSN. Are you out of town or can't get WSN? WSN is now streaming our broadcast channel 24-7 on Roku and Apple TV. Download our Roku channel and Apple TV app to subscribe. The $100 allow you to watch anywhere in the world. Visit app.wsn.tv to sign up. Do you notice you two people here beside me who said Roku and not taking the abuse I got the last time for mispronouncing it a couple weeks ago? How else would you pronounce it? It's Ruku. Oh, my goodness. Everybody knows that. Oh, my goodness, Megan. Yeah, I know. I got <laughs> some severe abuse for not pronouncing it right. Timeout. That's a steal. Here goes Langles the other way. It's two on one, and she goes right to the rim, but she can't finish. Good pressure from Lindemann, and she's in a hurry the other way. Pull-up jumper, Lindemann. That bounces out. Lindemann that time just a little bit out of control, yeah. falling forward as she let that one go. She's so anxious to score after the good defensive play, she probably rushed that shot just a bit. Well, and you can see she's made the adjustment. She knows getting to the rim is not going to be easy. So we've seen her three or four different times just go ahead and stop in the lane when she had a little bit of space to put the jump shot up. This is Ava Henry. She tries to go baseline, goes all the way under the glass. Martinez with the ball here. Her Miller, lob inside. There's Lindemann again defensively, backside help. Three on two the other way. Oh, and she makes a nice move to the goal, and she will draw a foul that will go against Marissa Hermiller, her third in the game. This is just a great job by Liv Lindemann. That's 
That's that leadership. That's that experience at work. As she went in, nice job weaving around the defense, and she knew her Miller was there, you know, and was able to get new shoes out of position. So, two for three from the free throw line tonight. Left that one a bit short. Typically a 75 percent free throw shooter. And we'll see back into the game as is Leah Kirkendall. Each team makes a sub and. Looks like Kermor's got to set a while with those three fouls and 4.21 to go in the third. That one she makes, that's point eight for her tonight. Henry advances the ball against Lindemann. This is Kirkendall who just checked in a moment ago. And she has to hand off to Henry. Since that first quarter, this Jefferson defense has been very, very good. Kirsten Moore just doing a fantastic job on uh, Whitney Langles, just not letting her have any space whatsoever. There's Lindemann with a rebound. Now we got a scramble on the four for the ball. And French gets it. Somehow French able to just be kind of in the right spot. Not sure how Lindemann was able to save that one. Lindemann pressured out front by Henry. See if they give her one of those high ball screens again. Nope, they're going to run double screen off the baseline. Here's a lob inside to French, and she got undercut. Foul will go to Abby Hazelman, and you know, she has battled French all night long inside. That's just her first foul, and she's held French to just two points. Yeah, Hazelman that time just got herself in a bad position and was going back to back. Uh, with French, not much more she could do at that time. Jenna Rostifer into the basketball game. And she gets a 17-footer. And we're going to get what, held ball? I thought so. Lindemann went up to shoot, and it was somebody got a hand on it, and it'll be a Jefferson ball in the arrow. Hazelman did a nice job getting all basketball and make sure she didn't pick up that foul. Here's Lindemann to inbound. Pressure that time on the inbound pass to Langles. Here'll be a long three. Splashed it. Long three right on Marquise. She's got two of those tonight for six points. Six big points and a four-point lead. Marquise, the best, three, our second best three-point shooter on this Wildcat team. Very comfortable taking that shot. We saw in the first half. If she gets a little bit of space, she will pull it up. Langles, she's short on her shot. It's, I think Langles, you're seeing, getting a little bit of frustration and she's just not getting the shot she's used to getting. Yeah, and there's a foul right there that will go against Whitney as she tried to get a charge, but was not able to get the call. She gets her second foul. This will be a Lipsick timeout with 2.49 to go here in quarter number three. Four-point lead, biggest one for Jefferson so far. Defense has been really good this quarter as well. Yeah, you know, they found something. That second and third quarter, they have clamped down on Lipsick. And, you know, I think we talked about, too, you know, Lipsick just looking a little bit of tired. Delphus Jefferson now looking like they've been a, they're a step faster, anticipating some of those passes. And I think the real key has been the job that Kirsten Moore has done on uh, Whitney Langles. She's just shut her down. She's almost been non-existent. She's running around, trying to come off of screens, trying to find some way to give herself some room, but it just hasn't been there. That will be the second timeout for Lipsick. Delphus Jefferson has also taken a couple of timeouts in this uh, basketball game. Three fouls for Lipsick here in the second half, just one for Jefferson. Lots of basketball going on this weekend. Where are you at Friday night? Friday night, Elida Shawnee, that go. rivalry game, a big game, a big game for that community as well with some things going on inside the community. Um, so looking forward to, to being there and being a part of what they have going on for for a, a young man in that school. So then wrapped around some tournament plays. The girls' yeah. tournament gets underway this weekend. I will be in Spencerville this weekend. How about the Bearcats? So they try to the wrap end. up their conference. You know, if you're, you know, year. The only thing that's gone wrong for Spencerville this year is moving up to Division Three <laughs> and being in that OG bracket. Here's another deep three, and she got another one. So confident with that shot, so smooth. I mean, that hit nothing but net going down, and that was a huge shot for Jefferson. Nine points off from the three-point line for Ryland. And who hit that one out of bounds? Hazelman has to go get it. Skip pass, Kirkendall. Vikings desperately need of a point to the rim, and shot will roll out in French rebounds. Good take, just wouldn't finish. Approaching two minutes to go, and... 
Liv Lindemann with the basketball team leads by seven. Here's another three. This will by Wiltsy. And rebound on the backside, and I think it was off. That was a foul. I'm going to say that yeah. Marquis was fouled going for that rebound. Leah Kirkendall committed a foul in the rebounding situation there. That's her first. Pass inside. French stripped from behind. This will be a three that will go up. Oh, Rossler shot spun around and wouldn't go. That would have been a big one. That would have pushed it to a 10-point game. Here's Langles to the rim. Left-handed scoop shot a little hard. French with a rebound. I think you're starting to see the size of Delphus Jefferson come into play as Lauren French right now is just owning the paint. Lipsick has been one and done on the vast majority of their shots tonight. Skip pass. Yeah, Lauren French has just two points, but her defensive presence and rebounding has been very important to this team from Jefferson. That ball doesn't go, and French, did she hit it out of bounds? She did. Good position on the backside, but it won't go. Teeman re-enters, Moore re-enters. 70 seconds to go here in quarter three. Lipstick with just a five-point quarter going so far. Outside of that 12-point first quarter, they have only scored nine points since. And right Kirkendall now, about went over and back with the basketball. This Lipstick offense is just looking for something, anything. It's Hermiller almost lost that one. Hermiller goes up inside. That one's blocked by French. Got both hands up. A bump and run out front. And that foul is going to go against. Going to go against Ava Henry, her second, team's fifth. My good friend Mark Miller, longtime broadcast partner, bump and run, good in football, not in basketball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Lipstick right now just get a yeah. little frustrated. They look like they're tired, they're frustrated. They're in a position that they're just not used to being in right now, and they can't quite find what they're trying to look, you know, find what they're looking for. A little full court, a four quarter look, and Henry's going to pick up foul number three and team foul six. Six team fouls, yeah. 26 seconds left to go, still here in the third period. Right now, that, I'm not even really sure what Ava Henry yeah. was looking for that time. She rushed out to challenge, but. Didn't really look like she was planning on slowing up prior to getting to Lindemann. Number four, Brooklyn Cunningham, a 5-5 sophomore, will enter with those foul situations that Henry has picked up. Last shot of the quarter opportunity coming for Jefferson. Here comes the high ball screen. And again, see if she accepts it or goes the other way. Pass to the corner. This will be a three that will go up, and nope, they're going to wave it off and call an illegal screen. It's a big call for Lipsick as that one really would have put some damage to make it a 10-point game. But now with 3.7 seconds left to go, Lipsick with an opportunity here to get a little momentum going their way. Quite honestly, the way the fouls occurred, I'm not sure who committed it, but somebody set an illegal screen. Here's a pass. They're going to get a throw it to Buzzer. That was a very good Jefferson quarter, and they will take a seven-point lead to the fourth. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Back at Jefferson, where our scoreboard tonight is presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken and Lime. A Wapak and Delpha is called Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's famous recipe chicken home style happens here. It's a 9-5 quarter in favor of Jefferson, thanks to a couple of big three balls from Mar Ryland Marquis. Yeah, Marquis really came up big that time. Liv Lindemann, she doesn't always have to do all the scoring. She draws so much attention. It does open up her teammates for good looks, and Ryland made sure she took advantage of that, put up six big points in the quarter, and now this Jefferson team, seven-point lead here in the fourth quarter. Skip pass, lob pass back door, and they sat on that one. Wiltsy was there, French was there. That was a, a play they had well scouted. Yeah, they had two players underneath, and you know I'm not Lipstick trying to go on the inside, but with Lauren French down there, there's just really nothing open and no going down there at all for them. There's French battling down inside, and she will go up and score. 
four points for her in the game. Good fight right there to secure the basketball and power up. Nine point lead. Henry off the screen comes Kirkendall. Langles gets a screen. She gets covered up in a hurry. They have really defended her well. Henry trying to get to the rim and Lindemann won't let her. Jefferson defense has been good. They give up 29.6 on the season. And that's kind of about where they're at right now. We're going to get a hand check foul right here. You know, Coach Lindemann said one of the keys to the game was going to be their man-to-man -man defense. And they have taken that challenge on tonight. They've done an excellent job. And you see Whitney Langles really struggling. Only four points on the night. And that's the difference in the game is she's yet to be able to get free. And they've been able to run double teams on other players, as you see right there with another turnover. There's two on two the other way and right to the rim. And scoop shot will go for Lindemann. She now has 10. Timeout, Lipsick, 6.47 to go in the game. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Do you enjoy games like this one? Are you thankful for the chance to showcase our local high school teams on TV? Please consider making a donation to TV44 so we can keep airing games just like this one. Donate online right now at WTOW.com or send a gift by phone by calling 419-339-4444. And we thank you for your support. Lots of tournament games coming up in the near future. One more week of boys' regular season. Girls' tournament starts this week and boys next week. So get on board with our basketball coverage on WOSM. Lipsick down 11. Want to make one, see if they got time to make one more run here. Lipsick got a last couple of timeouts, haven't been able to get much going. Looking for a different, uh, a different outcome here as it looked like there was almost going to be a turnover by Henry, but it's ended up going to be in a foul on Lindemann. On Lindemann. Yeah. So Lindemann. Her second, team's fourth. And at the lob it into Hazelman. She will hand off to Martinez. Henry, there have just been no open look since early in this basketball game for Lipsick. Ran to the rim, and that shot's a little bit hard. And the ball tipped around. Here's Lindemann again. She is around every 50-50 ball. And motors through the defense, goes into the lane. Her scoop shot will not roll in, but she'll go to the free throw line. And it just seems like Lindemann has a different speed when she needs it, especially on those open floor runs like that. She's trying to get that run out and just kind of turns it on. And fortunate for Lipsick, they were able to knock that basketball out of her hands and at yeah. least have to make her make it from the free throw line. The negative is the fourth foul on Ava Henry. Free throw. Jefferson's also going to be shooting free throws Point from here on out yeah. as that was team foul number seven. Point 11 for Liv Lindemann. Just a couple of field goals this evening and a three point field goal, but. Doing some damage at the free throw line. The lead goes to 13. Suddenly the lead is 13. Six minutes to go. Delphus Jefferson at one point in this game found themselves down 10, and ever since then they have just taken over. Shots blocked inside by Lindemann that time. Henry was trying to get to the rim and could not, or Martinez was trying to get to the rim and could not. Wiltsey trying to dribble back out front. Jefferson can be as patient as they would like. Comes a double team. Lindemann works into the lane. Her push shot will not go. Rebound on the backside by Permiller. Angle is trying to get to the rim. Here's a pass to the corner. Bounce around. Nope, that shot won't go, but Hazelman hustles into the rebound. Goes right back up. That won't go. And then French rips the rebound away. And Lindemann with pressure on the baseline from Martinez, and she will walk it up with five minutes to go in this one. She better be careful. She might be coming up against that 10 second, and there and it is. is. Good call, Nate. She got tied up down low, fighting for a little bit of that space, and I think she lost track of how much time she had going, and Walking it up easy, she made it about a step away from midcourt. 
wanting to be very, very patient as she, you know, we got a 13-point lead, but just a little bit too much patient. Good call by the officials. Picked up on that quickly. This is her Miller. Still haven't scored in a quarter, have the Vikings. This will be a three that will go up. That one will go. That breaks a long drought. Henry splashes that one down. She has eight points in the game and just made a three-point field goal. Cuts the lead to 10 with 437. The coach takes a timeout. We're going to take a break also. You're watching High School Basketball WOSN. That three-point field goal has cut the lead to 10. Coach Kreinbrick takes his fourth timeout with 4.37 to go here in the basketball game. And they're going to pick up full court. It was a big basket. Lipstick not out of this one yet. Still lots of time left to go. Only down 10. They can get a couple of quick turnovers or some stops. They can get into this, but they've got to find some way to get some offense going consistently here. Martinez poked the ball out of bounds in a very difficult place to inbound the ball. Let's see how much pressure they can put on. Let's get it to Lindemann, and she's going to skate up court. Three on two. Here's a pass to French. Here's a three that's going to go up. That'll be short and go out of bounds. Rostefert, a 33% three-point shooter, 19 made three-pointers on the season. Just hasn't been, quite been able to find that range tonight as that is her third miss from behind the arc. Langles. Here's a lob inside. Her Miller jumps over everybody, but she can't finish. Puts that one back up and stays with it and scores. Great extra effort by Hermiller that time as she was getting tightly defended, but able to get that one up. This three is going to go up. That one will splash. Guess who? Riley Marquis, four three-point field goals, pushes it back to 10. And that's a dagger. That one hurts. Lipstick had finally gotten back-to-back -back offensive possessions where they've scored. But Marquis able to come yeah. back and hit that three-pointer to push it back out to a double-digit lead. Langhalls was trying to get to the rim and drew a foul. That will go to Rostifer. Oh, we're going to get an offensive foul. That